part of uh, i'm going to explain different types of uh, magic uh, t that means the different types of webguides so previously we have uh, discussed about the webguides already uh, up to here i have discussed in my previous classes so about the signal flow graph we have already discussed okay now we are going to discuss about the different types of webguide and their applications so first part of webguide is your e plan t so it is called as one is e then second part is plane and second third part is t so you can see that uh, this looks like a t structure okay so because it looks like a t structure so it is called as your t now why it is called as a e plane that we are going to understand why it is called as a e plane t okay so see it is the schematic diagram here you can see this is port 1 this is taken as port 2 and this is taken as port 3 now this port 1 and this port 2 they are interchangeable because they are uh, uh, symmetric in nature so which one is taken as port 1 that doesn't matter now port 3 is always in the uh, the uh, t side or the down side of the t it's taken as t now you see why it is called as e plane t so you can see this figure so if this figure is rotated so if we rotate this figure then we will get uh, this figure now you can see in this the e fields are oriented in this manner if i zoom in here so the e field are oriented in this manner now you can see the direction of orientation of the e field and the arm that is connected here is in the same direction and that is why it is called as the e plane so here also e, e field is direct like this and here also the e field will be going like this so that is why it is called as your e plane because the arm that is extended it is in the direction of the e plane so let us see what it is theoretically so an e plane t junction is formed by attaching a simple webguide attaching a simple webguide to the broader dimension of the rectangular webguide okay so this one is the broader dimension of the rectangular webguide which already has two ports so port 1 and port 2 was existing and in this one we have attached one more webguide in the broader side okay so the arms of the rectangular webguide make two ports called the collinear ports so this is called as collinear port or collinear arms port 1 and port 2 while the new port port 3 is called as the side arm or the e arm so this is called as the side arm or the e arm next thing as the axis of the side arm is parallel to the electric field so as i have said here electric field will be going like this and this is also in the same manner as they are parallel so this junction is called as the e plane t junction now this is also called as voltage or series junction we will see why it is called as series junction the ports 1 and 2 they are 180 degree out of phase with each other so it is designed in such a way that the dimension of this is designed in such a way that so if 0 degree is there then here 180 degree phase shift is will happen here so they are 180 degree phase shift with each other now with line diagram this can be represented like this that figure shows the connection made by the side arm and the bidirectional wavelength to form the parallel port so this is how the port is formed so signal can come here and it can come here signal can come from here and it can go here similarly some signal can come from port 3 also and it can go here or it can go here okay so next is what are the different properties of the e field sorry e plane t the properties means what how do we analyze the e field so mathematically the properties can be derived but uh, we can easily remember this it's not very difficult so first of all e plane t can be defined as a 3 cross 3 matrix because 3 ports are there so it can be defined as 3 cross 3 matrix so if it can be defined as a 3 cross 3 matrix so according to port 1 port 2 and port 3 you need to write the s parameter s matrix so first is as there are 3 ports are there there will be 9 elements which will be 3 cross 3 s11 s12 s13 like this so remember one thing uh, last class also i have discussed s21 means your input at port 1 and output at port 2 
okay this is what meaning of s21 so accordingly all this s parameter is checked now the scattering coefficient s13 and s23 they are out of phase by 180 degree s13 and s23 okay so they will be out of phase 180 degree that why because we have considered port 1 and port 2 are out of phase by 180 degree so if a signal comes the from 1 to 3 and if the same signal is given at 2 to 3 so the amount of signal received at port 3 will be out of phase 180 degree so that's why s23 is equals to s minus s13 is written next is if the per the port is perfectly matched to the junction so this third port is perfectly matched to this junction then what will happen the reflection happening at this port will be zero so s33 is equals to zero then for symmetricity symmetricity means what i can interchange this value of this i can make port 2 and this i can make port 1 so due to the symmetricity so we can say that sij is equals to sj okay so s12 equals to s21 s23 is s32 s13 s so this is possible because of the symmetricity so next is considering all these above conditions all these conditions so we can rewrite the s matrix like this so what is rewritten here so s3 s3 is made 0 then s23 is minus s13 so these are repl uh, replaced and s23 and s23 all are equals to minus s13 okay s32 so what is the value of s32 that is equals to s23 as well that way it is replaced then we can say that we have four unknowns considering the symmetry property from the unitary property you can write from the unitary property you can write one matrix into its conjugate matrix is equals to identity matrix okay so value of this matrix if you find the determinant this will be one here okay <coughs> only diagonal elements if there are so that will be one so matrix value into its conjugate value is equals to unitary matrix now if we represent the port then how it looks like so you can see port 1 so input if it is given here the current are in opposite direction and the output port currents are in downward because they are 180 degree out of phase okay and the, in this port it will be like this so you cannot say it is uh, towards 1 or towards 2 so this will be the direction so port 1 port 2 and port 3 that's it now if uh, here input is given so one part of output will be available here one part of the output will be available here. if input is given at port 3 then what will happen say port 1 will also be there will be output port 2 there will also be output okay so now we need to find that what will be these values okay so how to find that values so we can apply this unitary property s into s conjugate equals to 1 then uh, with some row and column separation method we can uh, sol solve this equation okay how to solve so first if i write row 1 and column 1 so which one is row 1 column 1 so row 1 and column 1 so i can write that multiplying that row 1 and column 1 i get s11 square okay then plus s12 square plus s13 square is equals to 1 so is equals to 1 here net row 2 into c2 this will be equals to 1 then row 3 into c3 so here it is 0 so only s13 plus s13 square is equals to 1 okay so s13 and your s13 sorry this one so this will be equals to 1 okay yeah, sorry 0 then these are the four equations so comparing equation 1 and 2 so if we compare equation 1 and 2 you can see here s11 is here s12 is here s13 is here so s13 is here and s12 uh, is here so if these two get cancelled s11 s12 and s13 s13 they will get cancelled and if you subtract it so what we will get we will get s11 is equals to s22 okay so similarly from equation 3 so if equation 3 what it will be 2 into s13 square equals to 1 so s13 value will be 1 by root 2 that value is also samely negative of s23 next is s13 conjugate s11 
minus s13 conjugate s12 so that is from the row 3 and c1 multiplying row 3 and c1 so we are getting this row 3 so this is row 3 into c1 so multiplying this we are getting this equals to 0 so he, this side also we have to uh, multiply row uh, row 3 and c1 so this is row 3 into column 1 so that is equals to 0 so from equation 4 we can get that uh, s13 whole into equation 4 okay s13 whole into s11 minus s12 conjugate equals to 0 and s11 is equals to s12 okay so uh, next is from equation 1 again we can get the s11 value so just by solving one by one equation we can get all the s parameter values now if this s parameter values i'll replace in the matrix we'll get this one so 1 2 1 by 2 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 1 by 2 so for remembering purposes just write this thing then 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 so first 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 from this side also first 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 and this one is 0 okay so substituting the above equation for finding out the values at the nodes you remember the signal flow graphs so in signal flow graphs these are the nodes so this uh, i think there was a matrix no matrix yeah so these are the ports like so b1 is the output port a1 is the input port so if s11 is there only s11 is there then b1 equals to s11 into a so that is what it means So next is uh, this is a graphical representation how the signal might be looking like if it is visible. So this is a E plane T for example. So in the next uh, lecture I will discuss about the S plane T. So till then thank you have a good day.